better our super fans. Okay, welcome to this last critical conversation session. Oh my God, we booked a lot this week. I think we got enthusiastic and just thought, fuck it. Um, so as ever, uh, headphones, if you've got kids, uh, it's Saturday night. It's been a long week. I'm all out of fucks to give. Um, however, what I will be giving is some good knowledge on life purpose and how it relates to resilience. This is one of my specialist topics. I've been coaching people on this topic for many, many years, actually quite a few years. Uh, we did a course called Purpose Black Belt. It was a course, now it's an evergreen course. Virginia can share that. If no one wants more info, that's the place to look. And um, I guess, let's see, 16 years ago, I got sober um, from being an alcoholic. And, you know, I really was without a sense of life purpose. I was basically suicidal, very unhealthy, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And, you know, I, I basically said to myself, I'm either going to kill myself or I'm going to get my shit together. And for years, I'd been really in this place of needing life purpose and not having any. I was adrift. And the one thing in my life I know I loved was Aikido, martial arts. Um, so I just kept kind of following that, even though I was drinking a lot and, you know, you kind of get away with that when you're young, if those two don't sound compatible and shake it, you know, I drink every night and shake it off the next day. And um, without that sense of life purpose, I was unhealthy. I wasn't really able to have any good relationships and I was lost. And I, and I think in some ways that was a microcosm of how many people are in the modern world. You know, I was lacking a sense of meaning, a sense of purpose a sense of something bigger than myself to be of service to, to devote myself to. But I had this sort of shining light of Aikido. I knew it wasn't exactly that. I didn't, you know, I never thought I'd become an Aikido teacher, but it was something about that. So I kept kind of picking at that thread, you know, like I didn't really have any coaching around this. I didn't sort of really understand. I just knew there was this one thing that I liked doing a lot and it would sort of keep me sober for a while. It would give me a reason to sort of get out of bed and get rid of my hangover and go to a course or a class or whatever. And I noticed not, sort of nothing else in my life really did that. And there was fun things, you know, like the alcohol and drugs were fun until it wasn't. And um, by the way, if you drink and take drugs and you enjoy it, keep doing it. Um, but if it stops being fun, you might want to look at sobriety, um, which is what happened to me. And there's other things that were fun. You know, I discovered sex, I discovered travel, I discovered all, all the good things. But none of them really gave meaning because pleasure isn't really a substitute. We're in the deep end here, guys. Are you okay? I'm, I'm kind of, we're we all good. I've just got into it. We're all, we're all okay? Be nice to see a few more of you if you're willing to turn cameras on. Um, so I'll tell you my story and you hopefully you can gather something from it and I'll draw some of the points. So I had this sort of thread though that I kept picking at. And then uh, I kind of gradually realized, okay, so it's not quite Aikido, but it's using Aikido in social projects. And there was a peace project with the United Nations and Cyprus that was very meaningful to me. And um, I got involved with that. And I just kept kind of narrowing, going, okay, what, what is the thing? What is the thing? And eventually it was what I would now call embodiment, though I didn't have the word at the time. Like I realized, okay, this is the thing. And in some ways that's a discovery in some ways, that's a sort of excavation. You know, you have to kind of dig some dirt. You have to do the hard work. Um, in some ways, it's a choice. You can also sort of choose in some ways, you know, like to some extent, right? Like I choose this. It's kind of like marriage. You know, marriage is you fall in love, but at a certain point, you also commit. It's both, isn't it? It's sort of, whoa, where did this person come from? But it's also a relationship where you get to know the person. And it's also a choice at a certain point. So I think sort of life purpose is kind of kind of always kind of like those. Um, sometimes the Americans present it in this sort of, you know, God has a special plan just for you. Um, but that's because Americans are religious nutcases. That's why we threw them out of Europe and gave them a continent, which had nobody at all on it until we put them. No. So, um, you know, so even if you're American and you're an atheist, that sort of religious feeling is still sort of there. So it, it infuses personal growth culture. Um, so that sort of sense of you know, the sort of the universe, people might say, instead of God, if they're a hippie. And I think that's a useful perspective, even if it's not true. To go, okay, you can be, how would I put this, sort of purpose agnostic, right? So sort of purpose faith would be, you know, the universe has a plan just for me, right? And purpose atheism would be like, it's all meaningless. It's all, we're just billiard balls knocking into each other, you know? Purpose sort of existentialism, very European, would be I choose purpose. Yeah. 
and purpose agnosticism, I also think is a good option, which you see, I've thought about this shit a lot, like a lot over the years. Purpose agnosticism is where we say, you know what, I don't know if there's meaning or purpose or higher power or something more in the world, you know, God, the universe, nature, whatever, the Tao, but actually acting as if might be helpful. Right. Like let's let's act as if you're not a horrible mistake. Yeah, let's let's act as if you're you're not just a sort of you know sexual fluid splatter against the wall. Yeah. I, it's Saturday night. I'm out of fucks, Virginia. I'm sorry. Um, let's act as if you know there is some purpose and meaning. And what you might, and I sort of chose to do that at a certain point, and I kept picking at this thread and it became embodiment and you know, I chose, I thought when I sort of realized that might be the thing, it gave me a reason to be alive. It gave me a reason to get sober. And I went, you know what? Let's give this a go, this life thing, right? Because I wasn't really giving it a go when I was an addict. I was sort of half-heartedly, you know, sort of big addicts, kind of like wishing you were dead while, you know, not actually killing yourself, right? So I, I kind of went, you know what? Fuck it. Let's give it a go for a year. And, you know, if after a year, I can always go back to drinking or kill myself, right? Um, so I gave it a go and lo and behold, good things happened and things opened up and I was given possibilities. I had great mentors and great opportunities. Big shout out to Don Levine, who was um, run an organization called Ike Extensions. And he sent me to Brazil and Ethiopia and I, I made myself useful to people. I lived out of a bag and slept on the floors of dojos and basically oh here's the deal with life purpose you get to have one but here's the deal you're not you're not gonna like it you're not gonna like it you ready you have to give up everything else that's the deal okay so um you need to be willing to cut your own leg off cut your left hip off cut your left testicle off you need to be willing to sacrifice everything and that just gets you in the game that doesn't mean you'll be successful it doesn't mean you run a successful business it just means that you get to play the game. You get to sit at the card table, as Daria might say. Yeah. So um, I did that. You know, I gave it my all and I went around the world and I developed, I made myself useful to people that had more power, money, and influence than me. I had nothing. I lived out of a bag for seven years. I spent seven years living out, literally living out of a bag, um, sleeping on couches and eating pot noodles and all the rest of it. Um, and people would say to me, Oh, you're so lucky. I wish I could do what you're doing. And I would say, you could. Now, there's variations to that. If you've got kids or you're 75 or, you know, there's variations. It wouldn't look quite like it looked for me at 25, right? 27, 28. Um, but you could. <laughs> you just have to give up everything else. <laughs> and the weird thing about life purpose for me is like the more you pursue it, the more you get, right? And the more you sacrifice, you're a human sacrifice. You're... And on an Aztec shrine, cutting your own heart out of your chest and eating it and the blood's all over your face. Like that's life. That's the best image of life you could imagine is being on an Aztec pyramid, cutting your own heart open with a stone knife and eating it and laughing. That, that's the best image of what life is I can I can paint. For you. Is, is it too dark for a Saturday night? I'm enjoying this shit tonight. Like I'm going to have a good time fucking I'm working on a Saturday night. <laughs> Some of you are with me, camera's on is good. It's nice to see the smiles and the looks of disgust, revulsion and horror. It's nice to see you grabbing earbuds so your children don't hear this. Excellent, good work. Um, you got the deaf cup there, Virginia. Yes, you've had your run-ins with deaf too. Uh, until you really face deaf, you won't really face life purpose. So I was very lucky. I had you know suicides in my family. I had um, my own suicidal thoughts. I had uh, exposure to war zones. You know, like it's in the Ukraine this year and, and everyone was, you know, panicking. And they're like, you seem relatively calm and happy. I'm like, it's not my first fucking rodeo, you know? Probably the most personal one. Definitely my favorite war zone, but um, not the first one. You know, some people it's cancer. Some people it's death of child. Some people it's, you know, sitting in a graveyard for a week. Ever done that? Sit in a graveyard. Yeah. And I, one thing I did in India was watch bodies get burned. You know, what you ever done that? You can do that in India. Go to India, go to Varanasi, watch the bodies get burned. It's like, that's you. That's, that's, that's every mitochondria in your body is doing that right now. Okay. That's happening right now. You're a fucking Varanasi funeral pyre in every cell in your body burning glucose and oxygen. Too dark for you? It's going to get worse. Um, 
so you know given that given that what we're going to do that's always the question um and to some extent i think it's always artificial right like unless you're really religious and even those people don't fucking believe you can see it in the eyes of the taliban they don't know they don't know 100 percent. they 99 but there's always that doubt but to some extent it's a choice and i threw myself into it and for me immediately my life got better didn't have any money didn't have you know a lot but like my life got better and even like like a different level of girlfriend entered my life and they're like i don't know where your train's going but it's going somewhere so i want to be on board this is not a dirty metaphor okay it's just about going somewhere we're not talking trains and tunnels or any of that shit yet okay um I noticed that I was like, wow, where did all these amazing women come from? Or wow, like higher caliber friends, or, you know, I had a reason to do my health stuff or whatever. Um, the bad news, you want some more bad news? God, it's more bad news tonight. More bad news. It's never done. It's always, I, I constantly kind of get, you get sidetracked. Why do you get sidetracked? Because of greed and ignorance and delusion. Because other people want what they want. They don't want what's best for you. Because society, advertising, media, kings, barons, and popes of various kinds, ancient and modern, right? You, you get that Facebook's like a, you know, it's like the Catholic Church of the modern age, right? Yeah. So you, you get that the, the robber barons who used to run Britain just exist in a corporate entity now. It's the same shit. It's people with power and influence who, you know, want you to do things that are not your life purpose. And it's not necessarily evil or anything. They just want you to buy the gherkins or whatever they're selling, right? So um, some of them are evil. Some of them are just like, we got gherkins. We want you to get the gherkins. So try and think think about gherkins more. Don't feel deeply into your embodied life purpose. Yeah. Um, so given all that, we're constantly, me included, getting dragged off from our thing. We're trying to please people or you know, <laughs> trying to not please people in my case sometimes, whatever it is. We've got these patterns that are historical. We've got trauma patterns. We've got the media. We've got you know religions. All these things. Um, so there's a constant sort of readjustment. It's much more like riding a bike than firing a missile. So you get how you ride a bike. You sit on a bike and you start pedaling, and it wobbles, but you keep pedaling, and it keeps it the, the, doing this motion, keeps it kind of relatively stable, and you have to kind of move the handles. Occasionally, you crash the bike, and you know fucking do horribly for a year, and you have to get back on the bike. That's more like how life purposes. Um, I've coached people on many different forms of this. And how does it relate to resilience? Well, when you have why, all of a sudden you can do anything. You can suffer a lot with a why. If I said to you, hold your breath for a minute, you might may or may not be able to do it. But if I said, okay, I'll give you a million pounds if you do it, you'd probably fucking do it, all right? If I said, hold your breath for two minutes or else I'm gonna shoot this child in the head, you'd hold your breath for two minutes. Okay, you just need, there's no children here. I'm not shooting anyone. Don't worry. Children are actually relatively safe around me. They're, they're probably some of the safest people around me. Um, not so much people who piss me off, attracted young women, etc. But children, pretty safe. Um, so no children will be harmed in the making of these storytelling. Um, however, if we have a why, we can do a lot. It makes us resilient. It makes us able to get up early and handle things. It gives us a reason to do the health practices that make us resilient, right? It's like you, you need a big reason to get up and meditate because it's hard fucking work. It's easy to stay in bed. Right? You need a good reason to eat the green broccoli shit or whatever instead of, you know, the KFC, which is what I had last night, I'm going to be honest. Okay. Um, we need a big reason. And if we don't have that, you're unlikely to do the things that make you resilient. And when you do have it, you can cope with a lot. What do I mean by a lot? Life. Life is a lot. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um, so if you don't, yeah, exactly, Maria. Uh, if you don't have this, what can you do? Well, it's not a done deal. There's, you know, there's things you can do. For, for example, be around more inspiring people. It becomes unbearable. Uh, take all entertainment out of your life if you don't know what your life purpose is go sit in the woods for a week okay you'll go crazy but eventually you'll start thinking things um follow your somatic radar what do i mean by that by the way i'm giving you like purpose black belt the entire course in fucking 30 minutes there um all of these things are like a 20 minute video explaining how to do it and where to do it and what to do exactly because it's not you know it's not as simple as this um, however a few ones somatic radar what lights you up what turns you on 
Okay. Not literally your pervs. What make gives you energy to get out of bed? Okay. Um, sometimes there's a few feelings to watch out for. One is energy and excitement. You know, I was feeling tired before this call. As soon as I'm on this call, I'm not feeling tired because I'm aligned with my life. I'm like, oh, where's this energy come from? Is <laughs> the gods. Um, it's not Mark speaking now. Um, so one is energy and excitement. Another one is deep ease. Okay. Think of it like hot new. Let's make them French. Why not? Hot new oiled. Uh, bikini clad male or female take your pick a uh, french lover versus comfortable familiar at ease wife slash husband slash favorite dolphin okay um it, both of those feel do you get what i mean by those feelings one is the sort of deep comfort and ease of the familiar which is not to be underestimated actually people often overestimate excitement in our culture but I think being really being at ease with someone is a good sign they're a life partner, actually. Yeah. Um, life purpose is like a life partner. The difference is it's not a human being. It's a task. <laughs> right? It's a task. It's a thing to do. You've got to have people in your life and stuff to do. They don't replace each other. You need both. Resilience comes from doing the right stuff in the right places with the right people. So you got that? Right stuff, go have a task. That's the it in the right places, okay, with the right people. If you miss one of those three things, yeah, not going to have resilience because you're going to be, why the fuck am I here if you're in the wrong place? Anyone ever have that sense? Like, I remember when I was in England, I grew up in the, the Fens, which is like the Alabama of England. It's sort of rural, everyone's cousins, hard drugs, lots of violence, flat fields of corn. And um, we grow potatoes. And I just had the sense, like, I'm in the wrong place, right? Like, what am I doing here? Dorothy has to get the fuck out of Kansas. Okay. Dorothy did. I'm Dorothy now. I don't know where this is going this evening. Um, so Dorothy got the fuck out of Kansas because it was the wrong place. I had to go find my weird. By the way, weird, the word weird, it's like the fates that the gods have in store for you. That's what the word weird meant. It's a Norse word with a Y. It was spelled originally. Yeah. With a Y, that works on two levels. Wow. My brain's firing today. I love ADHD. Anyway, so I had to leave that place, but then it's also with the right people, right? It's like, okay, is this my tribe? Is this my crew? Are these my dolphins of choice? Yeah, um, the right people. And then the right work is the, you know, that sense, and it's a felt sense of like, I should be doing this. So I remember when I did this job in Cyprus using Aikido, where I met Paul Linden and Richard Strozzi Heckler and Jose Buene from Brazil, my friend Testify from Ethiopia, my friend Miles from Israel. Many of these people became very influential. I met these all in one place. And the first night I was like the assistant to these important people doing this big project. I was like the go further, the runner. And I remember walking with this international group across what's called the Green Line in Cyprus. This is in my book, I tell this story. And there was just a felt sense of I'm in exactly the right place, doing exactly the right thing with the right people for the first time in my life. And I went, yes, I'm getting there. I'm finding that thing. And it wasn't long after that I got sober. I kind of lost it again, found it again. Um, yeah, and that makes you extremely resilient. It means that you have the, also the energy and the why to do the other things that make you resilient against um against the temptations let's be let's get hallelujah i'm gonna get christian on you all i've been buddhist for a long time but it's time to get christian i what i really like about the christian frame is that often there are temptations right right it's like not like oh you shouldn't eat a biscuit or you know blowjobs are evil god forbid or anything like that right but the idea of like a sin is to not hit the mark that not me, like a mark is in a target. Yeah. My name means target, so I haven't figured this out. Um, so a sin or, or a temptation is like something that will maybe give me some pleasure, maybe be fun, but isn't really what I'm here to do. And the truth is you sort of know, right? You sort of know what that is. You can get closer to it. Some people spend their whole life searching. Some people are very clear, like I'm a vet, you know, it's like a very clear job. Other people, there isn't a clear job or there isn't a clear word for it. So it becomes more of a dance. Yeah. Woo! You guys still with me? What you learned so far? What are your takeaways? Anything?
Don't have anything, stick it in chat. Okay, so purpose is extremely good for resilience. Change of tack now. Now I'm going to tell you the exact opposite thing. I mentioned this in the call with Fleet the other day. Um, purpose is also a nightmare. Purpose is also, like, purpose is the gods abusing you, right? Like, like the muse doesn't care if you had breakfast. The muse does, she does, she's a bitch. The, the bitch whore muse doesn't fucking care, okay, that you haven't slept. She's going to keep you up all night working on this project. She's going to fucking send you to Ukraine when you should be working on your business. She's going to fucking make you do ridiculous things and absolutely burn you out. Yeah? So it's kind of like you're a wire that as a human can have like 100 volts put through it. Okay? Purpose is going to put 1,000 volts through you. Yeah? It's going to make you crazy going to make you burn out it's going to make you an asshole to all your friends because you'll be so driven read the lives of great people oh yeah like nelson mandela or like oh martin luther king like you would not want to be married to any of those motherfuckers okay like there's and you don't want to be in their lives as a loved one like there's occasional exceptions but generally it's like they're exploding yeah they've got a thousand volts running through them by the way, a little word of caution. Sometimes people think, oh, life purpose, you have to achieve grandiose things. Um, as someone that's had a tiny taste of that, let me tell you, it's overrated and not what it's all about. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a, a common confusion. We always hold up. Oh, you've got to be like the Dalai Lama. It's like, A, no, you don't. B, you wouldn't want to be. Okay. Socrates' wife is not happy with him that he drunk the hemlock. Yes, he's like, go, go, go to Lesbos or something. And he's like, no, I will die for this. Okay, uh, cool. So you've got to be careful of life purpose as well. It could actually burn you out, right? It can make you driven. It can make you do crazy, intense things. It can make you think you're a god. This is the story of Icarus. People know the story of Icarus. Virginia, I'm getting classical on these motherfuckers today, huh? We're getting Athenian on their ass. So um, Icarus is the story of the guy who flew too high. What does it mean? There's other stories in other cultures that have similar things. Um, so this is the idea uh, that when we get infused with the godlike enthusiasm and powers and cities, they'd say in India, um, of life purpose, of feeling an instrument of the divine, uh, we forget we're human and we fly too close to the sun and we burn out in various ways. This is why musicians are incredibly prone to drug addiction, for example. Yeah, it's like, I'm a god. I'm like, no, you're channeling the divine. You're not that. That's why in ancient times, people didn't sign their paintings. They would have regarded it as arrogant to associate themselves with their artistic work. Yeah. You with me? Enthusiasm literally means God is like, there we go. Virginia is getting some classical Greek shit. I saw him, Joe Rogan the other day, I saw a thing of his saying, America was the first free democratic country. We invented freedom. And I can just see like the Greeks just like rolling their eyes at this. And obviously the, Brit, the Greeks invented it, the British improved it and the Americans systematized it. In the world. So just so we know the roles of the nations of the world. Um, in that good we all good excellent all right uh i think i've said everything i have to say yeah i think that's about it could say loads of other things about how to coach life purpose and i've got loads of exercises on that different things work for different people i constantly have to remind myself um everything from deaf meditations to coaching to somatic techniques you know we do body coaching around it using body uh, body toolkit poses we use something i i do uh, quite regularly with clients frankly though it's late on a saturday night and i can't be fucked to do it now um but uh, all those exercises are in the life purpose course uh, purpose black belt if you haven't bought anything from us by now what the hell are you doing we need to pay for our drug habits too okay no one I keep me in protein shake it's not cheap this stuff 40 40 euros for the bag um so yes if you haven't bought purpose black belt and you're interested in stuff it's a pretty good place to start you can we've also got a mobile app so if you're like oh, i'm gonna buy it and never do it no you can go on your phone you can be like doing what all the kids do like with the instagram and then 
I'm not making any sense at this point, Virginia. Um, right. That's all I have to say about resilience and life purpose for today. Let's do questions for 10 minutes and then I will cook the chicken drumsticks that are in my fridge. Cool. Man cannot live off bread alone, but man cannot live off God alone either. Ooh, that's good, isn't it? Should remember Virginia, remember that. I always forget the good things I say. Problem is the really good things. I'm not really saying them, so I don't remember them. So what can you do? Okay, good. All your questions about life purpose and resilience in the chat. Now, make them short. No semicolons. Don't tell me about your mom. No long stories. No clauses that my ADHD brain can't work out. Just straight questions. Virginia, anything you've heard me say about this topic before that I've forgotten to say tonight that you think would be helpful? Oh gosh, I'm still uh, overwhelmed by all the stuff I heard that I can't think. That was a good one, huh? <laughs> that, that long that walk on the last. beach gave me some good eco-regulation. Greta's nodding, she's a regular as well. So I think that Portuguese inspiration today helped. It was helpful for me to hear that you had a tough time, although you had found your purpose, because I know this notion that, oh, I'll find my purpose and then everything will be rosy and No, easy. everything will be worse because now you know what you're here for and you're not doing it. Mm. <laughs> it's just like bad news after bad. That's what life is, isn't it? Life is one insult after another. That's all it is. People are like, I'm offended. I'm like, fucking, I'm offended by the, I'm offended by cancer and death and child mortality. I'm offended by the nature of the universe. Fucking, what's me saying the word cunt after all that? Uh, do I really want to find my life purpose? Maybe, maybe. I would say if you can live your life happily without, then maybe. But better not start. Once started, better finish. My Yoda voice. That wasn't a Yoda quote, though. Uh, how do I tell if the thousand volts are my life purpose or just being triggered? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, to me, as a life purpose has a generative quality, whereas being triggered usually has a constru contracted quality in the body and a destructive or limiting quality in behavior, whereas life purpose has a creative, generative quality. Um, also, life purpose is attractive. People, um, guys, this is bad news. People are going to want to have sex with you when you have your life purpose because you're going to feel like life itself. So people are going to go, I want to be inside that or that inside me, depending on whether you're in any or an uh, depending on which way you're inclined. Um, but they're going to want to, whoa, is this too much, Virginia? I'm talking about like life itself. We're talking about like people's attraction to life itself. There's, there's no more deep take on fucking than what I'm giving now. Um, like people are going to be attracted to life itself, whereas triggering isn't attractive. If you see someone that's triggered, like I'm, I'm walking by someone today and this guy was like proper having a go at his wife to the point where I almost fucking stopped him and said, look, I don't care what she's fucking done. You don't talk to ladies that way. You know, it was like, he was only talking. He wasn't hitting or anything, but I was like, it's not really okay. And it, it's repulsive, right? Triggered is repulsive. He was clearly triggered by something. It's, whereas life, like um, purpose is attractive. Yeah. Children will also follow you around and you will steal people's dogs. These are my promises. Um can you have more than one purpose? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, some people is different things in their life and I wouldn't get too attached to this. It's just one way of looking at things to say you have a purpose. You know, it's, it's not like I will build a bridge across the Mississippi, you know, it doesn't have to be so specific as that. Um, in some ways we could say it's a set of values. In other ways we could say it's a flavor. In other way we could say it's a journey. These are all metaphors that may or may not be helpful. Um, I think to look at it as just one thing is sometimes limited. Mm. Ben, this is quite long. This is quite long. This one, it's almost a paragraph. Ben, uh, since every person has their own world, yeah, lots of coaching questions. I think in one of the videos of the course, there's like a thing with 30 coaching questions for life purpose. 
So it can be like, what gives you energy? What gets you up in the morning? You know, what do you want written on your tombstone? There's, there's lots of angles on it with coaching questions. What do you, what in your body feels most right? Yeah. What could you do all day long without getting tired? There's, there's lots um, on this. Purpose is sexy. How do you handle courage of why in action when it drives you to the point where you mentioned the purpose and cost you a friend's life? Yeah. Good news is you'll get better friends. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you'll get friends that are more aligned with your life purpose. The bad news is you will lose the friends you have, but you're going to lose them anyway. So do you want friends who are friends with you because they think you're someone else? Or do you want to lose those friends because they know who you are? Like that is a question we must all face. Um, you should definitely learn to upset people though. If you're an, who's an agreeable person, I'm not. Neither is my wife. For those of you who are cursed with agreeableness, you need to train disagreeableness. This is partly cultural, like, you know, Swedish, for example, that's a very agreeable culture in a way, you know? So um, you Dutch and then you need to train disagreeableness. Train, actually train saying the opposite of what people say. If someone says it's a nice day, say, no, it's not. Yeah? Um, like training, some of you are like Russian bitches or something, you don't need this, okay? But like for those of you who are, you know, you've got my personality, but for those of you who are agreeable, like training disagreeableness to make, you not that just becomes another cage if it's a has to, but so that you become free of people pleasing. Like that's a journey in and of itself. And you can't do the life purpose journey without making that journey. Patiently waiting, Svetlana. I wasn't referring to you when I said Russian bitch, by the way. So, um, yes, Fetlana, how can I help? Um, yeah, just a question, maybe. I don't know. So I kind of figure out my purpose. So embodiment and everything to do with that. But there is so many different things like dancing, yeah. then neo-tantra that interests me, then other practices. So it's just so overwhelming how to narrow it down and it all brings me energy and pleasure and turn me on. Great. And if it's broad, that's okay. You might have to niche down for a business, but it might be that the purpose itself is relatively broad. That's good news. That's not bad news. Okay. You might be like, hey, I want to focus my efforts to gain expertise or to run a business or to gain, you know, be seen as a figure in this field. Um, embodiment, by the way, I love embodiment in East European accent. Embodiment is much sexier word from now on. We all say embodiment, okay? <laughs> that is uh, how we say it. Embodiment. <laughs> embodiment, what is a uh, Russian for embodiment? Embodiment, um, yes. So, one, as you do things over time, you will get better and better distinctions. So, if you're in the rough area already, brilliant, good news, and then you might find something turns you on a bit more than something else or something feels a bit more sustainable or a bit, you know, more energizing, yeah? a bit more easeful, a bit more right, all these feelings. Um, so if it's, you know, it's, it's if you have like a French lover, an Italian lover and a, and a Nigerian lover, and they're all fantastic, but, you know, just, you know, keep sleeping with them every single night until eventually you go, you know what, I's only, I'm going to narrow it down to one. Like, this is fine. So um, that's a metaphor, by the way, Sven, I'm not... <laughs> Yeah, don't have those. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I would say it's a nice problem to have. And if lots turns you on, awesome. And gradually over time, you might find some things drop away. You know, I used to do a lot more business training about embodiment, for example. And I went for a stage where that was really helpful for me. And then it sort of mostly dropped away. And these days, I, I rarely can be bothered to put on a suit. Cool. cool. Thank you. Good question. All right. Did I miss any questions? If I have, put them back in the chat. I think we're done. If not, I've got a few more minutes if somebody has a final question. Mm -hmm. Still got space for an American mentee. Reach out to me ASAP should you want mentoring. That is not cheap, though, I should say. Um, yeah. Do have a look at our Purpose Black Belt course. If you want more on this, that's actually pretty cheap, not crazy money. So uh, that's good. Uh, a breath of fresh air. Yes, people from North America either call me a breath of fresh air 
or Satan. It's one of the two. Very, very, very rarely in the middle. Very rarely in the middle. Uh, great. Very improvisational. As you can see from the notes I was reading from, uh, that's another sign of life purpose, by the way. It's very generative. You don't really need, like, too much of a plan. Yeah. Because it's there. It's blah. Yeah. Cool. We all good? Going once, going twice. Final comments? I remembered something you had said in the past. Hit me. About not being able to not teach and getting in some foreign country in a cabin or something, or you know, you're shopping something and you're like, oh, your shoulders are like you're naturally coming in out with stuff when you're meeting people because you just it, yeah, it's sort of the thing you can't not do. So if I don't teach for a week, I'll start like coaching the waiter. And my wife will be like, oh, for fuck's sake, Mark. You know, I'll be like, I've non-consensually coached people sitting next to me on planes many a time. And I'm like, well, okay, tell me about that. Oh, see what you did with your breathing there? They're like, I'm, I'm just trying to get to Dubai or whatever, you know? So, um, yes, the thing you sort of can't help doing is, is one of the signs. There's, there's many, many signs and indicators. And I go through them on, you know, different videos and stuff that I've done. Woo, we all good. You all subscribe to the podcast. Follow me on Instagram. Bought my book from Amazon. Give me a review on all three. Sent me a raven and anything else. All good? Cool. All right. Thank Virginia, a more loyal friend and employee you can never, ever ask for. Staying up late again in Greece. I know you've got a lot going on on a Saturday. So um, go enjoy your Nigerian French. And what was the other one? Um, I, I just, my fantasy lovers, I'm wishing you. Okay. Good, good, good. Something for the flavors. I better go before I cancel myself by mistake. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, nice. <laughs>